LED eyelashes because gluing circuit boards onto your eyes is apparently the latest thing. And I have to say, the first thing I thought when I saw these was, I wonder how they've actually, firstly, got circuit boards that can be glued onto the skin, which just doesn't, that creeps me out for some reason. And also, how are they going to hide the wires? And it's notable that in this picture here in the front that the areas where the wires come off are not visible. They've been sneakily cheating the shots a bit and perhaps using Photoshop to hide other bits. So um, these aren't that expensive. And what you get when you buy them is a box containing a little uh, silicon-covered white module. This is the module. Here's the silicon cover. And two tiny little circuit boards connected by three wires. Now, I have to say, initially, I thought that uh, these were just going to have a tiny little circuit board with a parallel array of LEDs and two wires going up to it. And I expected the power supply to be as simple as maybe just an on-off switch, maybe no actual active circuitry, maybe a resistor to limit the current, and that would be it. What it actually is, if I pull the wee tab out here, there's a CO2032 uh, lithium cell in the back, and when you press the button and hold it for a second... Initially, I thought it wasn't working because I was clicking it like this and nothing happened. But when you hold it for a second, it turns on and the LEDs start chasing. And if you, it goes through various patterns, but if you click it, you can choose which pattern it stays on. Now, it is multiplexing because these are actually tri-state multiplex. So it's looking a bit flickerier than it actually is. I'm going to see if I can find a static setting. Is there a static setting? Oh, that's dimming up and down. Is there a static setting? I thought there was a static setting. Maybe I'm wrong. No, maybe not. Uh, but either way, it'll look flickier to you because it is basically being scanned. It's being multiplexed. And the circuitry... Uh, well, let me show you. The Where's my notepad? I've lost my notepad. I really have lost my notepad. There it is. The circuit board in these consists of a very simple arrangement. The, there are three lines going out to the LED eyelash circuit board. Let's call them A, B, and C. What are they actually called? Oh, right, they are called A, B, and C. D, E, and F. Okay. And it's using... Uh, let's turn these off by holding it for a second. And it's using tri-state multiplex. And what that involves is three wires... And the LEDs, you can actually control a large number of LEDs or circuits on just three wires using tri-state multiplexing because each of those lines can be either positive, negative, or just floating, high impedance as they call it. So you can have an LED going from A and B in either polarity. You can have it from B to C in either polarity. Or you can have it from... Uh, a and C in either polarity. And what this means is that uh, from just three lines, you've got the six channels of LEDs. I'll just draw very half, half-assed half uh, light beams coming out of them. And the nice thing about uh, tri-state multiplexing is if it's as you increase for, for another line in this, you basically, to determine the number of LEDs you can drive, you multiply the number of lines by the number of lines minus one. So in this case, it's three... Uh, minus 1 is 2, so 3 times 2 is 6. If there were 4 lines, it would be 4 times 3, which is uh, 12. And uh, 5 lines would be 5 times 4, which is 20. So you, for a small number of wires, you can control a large number of channels. And what they're doing here is they're actually, each of those LED positions actually has two LEDs in parallel. So you've got effectively four LEDs in parallel, but two in one direction and two in the other on the circuit board. And the circuitry is super minimalist. They're relying on the fact that it's got this one fairly uh, chunky lithium cell, the 2032. Uh, and they've got the mystery chip because uh, the chip is a 16-pin chip, but it looks as though they've rubbed the number off. It looks like it's been a printed number and they've used a solvent to remove it because it's got a slight skid mark on top. And the circuitry is very simple. You've got the battery connected directly to the chip. You've got the three lines going off to one eyelash. You've got three lines going off to the other. And then you've got a button. And what's really odd about this is that the button, instead of connecting to a logic, uh, to one of the rails, 
appears to be connected between input and output, and that's maybe to do with the fact that it looks as though it might have been designed to have two more buttons. I'm not sure what they would have done with them. Uh, and they were maybe they're somehow multiplexed, although there isn't exactly a shortage of pins. So the LEDs are being connected directly across the output, but you've got the drop of the uh, switching transistors in these on both the output and the input, plus it's only 3 volts to start off with, so it's just kind of balanced. That's why there are no resistors. And if we take a look at the uh, actual circuit board itself, it's quite clever how they've done this. Here's a real close-up of the eyelash circuit board, and you can see the LEDs, they've marked them with polarity in one direction and then the other, and they're literally wired as three groups of four in parallel, with the lines just jiggling uh, up and down to actually give each one the combination of, say, A to B, B to A, and uh, should I say A to B, B to C, and C to A. Um, so they've done it, it's a very simple layout, and it means that they've managed to put it onto a, a circuit board which is about three millimetres wide, about eighth of an inch wide, curved, and with those three tiny little sort of, uh, the wires are stranded, they've got the lacquer, coloured lacquer on them, which has been melted back where they've been soldered, and then they've got a sort of uh, soft, P clear PVC coat in them, so it's, uh, it's not going to be super invisible, but you know, I suppose if you were sticking this to your face, you could hide it, but it strikes me as being kind of clumsy. Um, I suppose ultimately there's no other way to hide the battery, is there? So it goes into this rather ugly silicon cover with a sort of click button facility, and then it's got a standard hair clip. I'm not sure how these hair clips work. I'm not sure. Never actually used a hair clip, but that basically goes through the case, and you can clip it onto your clothing or um, onto your hair, and then just hide the wires. And these plug on, these uh, just plug into this. Note that if you plug them in the wrong way around, uh, you get weird effects. Let me demonstrate that. Let me plug one in the wrong way around. So that's this one. And now the effects are all just completely... It's all just sort of stopping mid-position. So what happens if I swap them from side to side? Let's uh, take this one out and plug it into there. Oh, that's all over the place. Let's turn it round. That's all over the place again. So it is quite important to get them not only into the correct connector, but also the right way around. And there are markings on these, but it's a bit vague. R, and it's got a wee arrow. But um, yes. So it's, it's very simple circuitry. Um, it's about as simple as they could make it. Uh, and the circuit board is quite a neat design, but um, I really can't see an application uh, where I'd really want to actually stick something like this. I don't like the idea of putting glue near the eyes. It's, it's a bit odd, but I suppose ultimately some people will want to do that. And I suppose really if they start falling off in the middle of their night out, they can just pull them off. It's a bit weird. Yeah, but quite interesting, quite well implemented. So you can see the effects. I'm going to step through them in the dark so you can actually see the patterns. And it's notable that these don't just light the LEDs. They can also dim them as well. It's kind of, it's doing the tri-state multiplexing and pulse of modulation. It's very reminiscent of the sort of icicle type lights where it does a sort of dropping effect with this sort of tail behind it. So, uh, yeah, this is the first mode. When you power it up, it actually goes into an automatic mode, which I've skipped here. And it's strange that when you power it back off again, uh, you'd think it would just store the last setting because the chip doesn't actually get powered down, but it does always go back to the uh, demo mode. So if I click this again, it does a, a series of pulses going in and out. Again, it's got this very strange and sort of random pattern. Alternating backwards and forwards. At this point, it's also worth mentioning that uh, these uh, are completely independent. Each side can do its own thing, those six lines. That's why it's got six separate lines coming from the chip, three to each side. Wiping in and out. Sweeping out from the center and back again. Trailing the dots behind them, the sort of dimming dots. Just flashing. That's a bit restless. Filling up from the centre, filling up from the outside. 
dimming up and down. Sort of. Now, is this back to the automatic? Yeah, this is the demo mode. This is me back to the beginning again. So it's got quite, it's got about 12-ish effects, I think. It's got a modest number. And I actually have to say, visually, it looks quite nice. I mean, it would be slightly scary in someone, I have to say. But um, it, it looks visually quite interesting. It's quite a novel effect.